Remember, electricity is dangerous and can be fatal. You should be qualified and competent to carry out any electrical work. I'm going to be using the European colour codes for this video that may be different from your local regulations. The service cable comes in, the electricity is going to flow through the phase, pass through the main fuse, then through the electricity meter and then into the consumer unit. The service head or cutout holds the main fuse or service fuse. This fuse provides protection to the property and ensures only a set amount of current can flow into the property. For example, in the UK it's typical to have a fuse rated between 60 and 100 amps. The electricity distribution company may also remove this fuse to isolate the property. They may do this, for example, to replace the electricity meter. The phase and the neutral then enter the electricity meter, which quantifies how much energy is being consumed. You may find that this meter is mechanical or electrical or even a digital smart meter. There are a lot of variations of design for these. The phase and the neutral will then leave the electricity meter and enter the consumer unit or fuse board. The consumer unit or fuse board varies in size depending on the size of the property and how many circuits there are being controlled. Inside the consumer unit we first have the main switch or main double pole isolation switch. This controls the supply of electricity to the rest of the consumer unit and therefore all the circuits feeding the property. This switch is not automatic and must be manually flipped to cut the power. This switch will disconnect both the phase and the neutral line together. The cables typically enter the main switch via the top terminals. At the bottom we find the neutral wire which will connect to the neutral block connection. We might find one or more phase wires coming out of the bottom of the main switch to feed the RCDs. If there aren't RCDs being used then a bus bar will feed the circuit breakers but we'll look at that again shortly. The phase line enters the RCD or residual current device, again usually entering via the top. This RCD switch is constantly monitoring the electrical current. It's checking if the current in the phase line is equal to the current in the neutral line. If these two currents are not equal then there is an electrical fault and the device will quickly and automatically cut the power to everything past the switch. Typically an RCD will break the circuit if it measures a difference of 30 milliamps as anything above this is dangerous for humans. If you touch a live wire and electricity flows through you to the ground then the current is bypassing the neutral wire so the phase and the neutral currents will not be equal. The RCD will notice this and then cut the circuit to reduce the risk of electric shock or death. It's now increasingly common to have two or more RCDs in a consumer unit. In such case the RCD will only cut the power to the circuits connected directly after it. So the other RCD will still be powered and only some parts of the property will lose power. The RCD will trip when it believes the current is unsafe even for a fraction of a second. It does need to be manually reset to restore the power but this does not solve the problem and you should locate and remove any faulty appliance or fixture. From the bottom of the RCD we have a buzz bar. This is just some conductive metal which the electricity flows along and connects into each of the MCBs which just makes the insulation easier rather than having a lot of cables. The MCB or miniature circuit breaker controls individual smaller circuits. For example, connected to one RCD maybe we'll have one MCB for the downstairs lighting, one for the upstairs lighting and one for the kitchen plug sockets. On the other RCD maybe we have one for the stairwell lighting, one for the upstairs lighting and one for the downstairs plug sockets. These switches will quickly and automatically trip to cut the power but they also need to be manually reset to restore the power. The MCB protects the circuit in two ways, overload and short circuit. The MCB is rated to handle a certain amount of current passing through it, for example 32 amps for the plug sockets. If this value is exceeded on that circuit, for example by gradually plugging in too many things, then the MCB will trip and cut the power to protect itself. The other protection it offers is short circuit protection. In the event of a short circuit, for example the live touches the neutral, then the circuit is bypassed and there may be a large and instantaneous increase in current. This will create a magnetic field inside the MCB which will cut the power to protect itself. The phase then leaves via the top of the MCB and will flow through the circuit, for example through some lamps. It then returns via the neutral cable and into the neutral block. 
All the circuits do this with the phase coming out of the circuit breaker and heading off around the property and the neutral lines coming back and meeting at the neutral block. The neutral block is then connected to the RCD, which checks if the current flowing in is equal to the current flowing out. The neutral then flows from the RCD to the main neutral block and from there back to the main switch, which is connected to the electricity meter and the service head. So electricity can then flow from the main distribution phase line up through the service head and the main fuse. It then flows through the electricity meter and into the consumer unit main switch. From the main switch, it flows through the RCD, along the bus bar and into the MCB. It then flows up around the MCB separated circuits. The electricity can then come back via the neutral lines and into the neutral blocks. It then flows through the RCD and back into the main block. From there, back into the main switch and then the electricity meter. It will then pass through the service head and the fuse and back into the neutral line of the main distribution cables. Now you may have noticed that there are some other cables with green and yellow stripes. These are called the earth cables. This earth cable usually runs along with the phase and neutral wires into the fixtures such as light switches and plug sockets. Some appliances will also use an earth wire for added protection, typically if the device uses a metal casing. The earth wires will connect from these fixtures into the neutral block with the consumer unit. All the earth cables for each circuit then connect into the earthing block in the unit. Another earth cable will then connect from this earthing block in the consumer unit over to the main protective earthing terminal which is typically located somewhere near the electricity meter. Other earthing wires will connect from this main earthing terminal over and onto metal pipes. That way if a person touches a live wire in a metal pipe in the property, the electricity will flow through the earth wire and should be detected by the RCD which will cut the power. There are a few ways the main protective earthing terminal is connected to ground. The first option is shown here with the main earth terminal being connected to the neutral wire of the service cable within the service head. This means that the phase to earth fault is effectively now a phase to neutral fault instead. Another option is to use the metal protection sheath around the service cable as the earth conductor. So the main earth terminal is connected to the metal sheath and this carries the phase to earth fault back to the transformer. The other option, which is when the electricity supplied doesn't provide an earth path, so instead the main earth terminal is connected to an electrode rod which is installed into the ground and provides a direct earth path. Okay, that's it for this video, but if you want to continue your learning then check out one of the videos on screen now and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, theengineeringmindset.com.